Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the live radar, we'll have a look at the weather warnings and then we'll go through the long term forecast with the GFS, the GEM, the ECNDF, the uh, UK Met Office run, the GFS ensembles and we'll finish up with the UK Met Office short range precipitation and temperature as well. It's looking very interesting over the next few weeks, we have big contrast between the models, however when you're starting to see the potential for the models to converge on this idea of seeing some sliding lows. Now, we have been looking at the high pressure over Scandinavia over the last few videos, and what's that doing is blocking the jet stream out, um, but the jet stream is looking quite strong. So instead of completely blocking the jet stream out, it's shifting the jet stream a bit further southwards, which allows colder air to sink in, combined with uh, precipitation and low pressure, we could be looking at some marginal snow events over the next few weeks, so do stay tuned and we'll have a look at when they could occur. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So we do have a look at the live radar, we do have a northerly flow coming in tonight. If you are in anywhere in Northern England, in Scotland, go outside now, you will feel that chill in the air that is coming through. It's going to get quite cold tonight, down to freezing quite widely in the north, and even in the south we'll get freezing as well where the clouds do clear. It's going to be a very cold day tomorrow, highs of maybe 2 or 3 degrees quite widely. There's going to be snow showers in the north, you can see they're already packing into northern Scotland and down the east coast as well. We do have an ice warning in force and we'll look at that in a minute. We also have a potential for a bit of a feature to move through northwest England, parts of Wales, through the west Mess Midlands, down through south and southwest and just generally southern England as well. There is an ice warning out for that as well, simply because it's going to be falling to frozen ground. There is going to be potentially some wintry hazards with it, but it doesn't look like it's going to be too substantial at this stage. Uh, in terms of snowfall. It does look likely some of it will turn to snow, especially over high ground, and potentially even to low-lying areas as well. But at this stage, it does look like it's quite an insignificant feature. And if it was just rain, um, we wouldn't really be talking about it at all. Um, but just because there's some wintriness mixed in with it, it could cause a bit of disruption tomorrow. So we'll have a look at that at the end of the video as well, looking at the UK Met Office run. But you can see the weather front that is... Um, Head of the cold air is clearing through southern England now, and we do have a rash of showers in the north and east. The usual spots with a north to northeasterly wind, um, bringing in the potential for some snow accumulation in Scotland, which is, of course, not too unusual for the first day of winter, and maybe some wintry showers in the east as well. So, we are starting December off at least this evening on a cold note. Now, if we do have a look at the weather warnings, you can see. As I said, there's an ice warning in the north where we have those showers and down the east coast as well. From 6pm today till 10am tomorrow, wintry showers will lead to icy stretches uh, Wednesday night into Thursday. Maybe one to two centimetres of snow may accumulate in North Scotland and the north Yorkshire Moors with two to five centimetres across high ground. High likelihood, lower impact as well. If you have a look at the other ice warning, it is exactly the same. Um, and again, we could be seeing the potential um, for a few centimetres over high ground. Now tomorrow we also have this other ice warning in force for parts of Wales um, down into the southwest from midnight tonight till 10am tomorrow. Icy stretches likely develop on Thursday morning um, and it's because an area of rain, sleet and snow is expected to move south. Much of Wales and parts of western England on uh, Thursday morning with temperatures falling ahead of the rain, sleet and snow arriving some icy stretches likely to form on the frozen ground. While some snow will fall, this will mainly be over high ground, or perhaps, although perhaps to lower levels for a time. Um, small accumulations are possible with one to two cent centimetres of slushy accumulations in places. So it's not a major snow warning or anything. There's a, nothing going to be looking like it's going to be major at all. It could pep up and we could be wrong. We could be seeing images of some decent snowfall tomorrow. But I do suspect, I'm pretty sure, uh, have a look at this UK Met Office warning, that we are going to be seeing generally just some wintriness and nothing too major. Now if we do have a look at the longer term forecast, have a look at the GFS. This GFS um, is a bit of an outlier when we have a look at the other models um, and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, and just for a general overview, it goes majorly westerly, polar vortex of doom with big low pressure sitting over Greenland and Iceland bringing in flat west to southwesterly winds, very mild, very unsettled, um, and stormy. Nothing you want to be seeing in winter if you are looking for any um, snow or cold weather. So as we run through, you see the northerly wind at the moment, high pressure does topple. Then we see a bit of a colder north to northeasterly wind move in, 
by this weekend. Could be seeing some snow with that on the back edge as we put, start to pull in some colder air. Again, you'll have to pinpoint the details because it will be very marginal. So you can see the air isn't that cold, but it is cold enough for the potential for snow. Beyond that, we stay in this sort of brief northeasterly flow before the Atlantic really pushes through. We see a, a burst of milder air before we see this low that heads to our northeast. Now, on the other models, as you see, this actually dives into Europe and could set up some snow events, potentially marginal snow events, as it pulls in cold air from the northeast. But it's all because the Scandinavian high is nowhere near as strong on this latest GFS uh, than it is on the other runs. And you can see the polar vortex of doom powering up. Um, and the reason why there's a bit of an outlier this run is because at day seven, it is so different to the other three models. We'll have a look at in a minute. Flat westerly winds, really quite unsettled and stormy. We'll be seeing quite a few named storms potentially with this, with just areas of low pressure spiraling around the mother low towards Greenland as just mild, wet and windy. Now, of course, there will be some colder sectors which are fueling these storms, but they won't be anything major. You can see generally the minus five line briefly come through, but it's going to be moist Atlantic air on the surface so we won't be seeing really any wintriness with that at all so it's just looking mild wet and windy from the gfs however if we now have a look at the gm see how that does compare uh fortunately it hasn't updated out to its full 10 days we only have it out to 204 hours but out to that length we will be able to see the stark differences now you see the northerly wind at the moment could produce some wintry showers of course as we see then we see another brief westerly wind before, again, we see a ridge of high pressure, see a bit of a colder air mass push through, um, and initially we do see a bit of colder air sinking from the northeast. Could be uh, maybe some snow showers or wintriness around with that as well, before we see a push of milder air. However, as we saw with the GFS, this headed northeast. However, we still have a bit of blocking around to our northeast, and it actually strengthens, and this low dives southwards. Now, diving lows are very, very uncertain to forecast exactly where they line up because if we have a look at the 850 HP temperatures, you can see mild air just to our southwest and bitterly cold air just to our northeast on the boundary of that. And of course, where those precipitation lines set up the weather fronts, we could be seeing bitterly cold um, air trying to dig in and that's where we see these marginal snow events potentially appearing channel lows potentially with this as well now as we stay in the go all the way to 204 hours right to the end of the run um or at least it's updated you can see the jet stream northwest southeast heading straight towards spain southern france and portugal and it does mean this cold air is coming in from the east colliding with these low pressure systems and in this scenario we could be seeing marginal snow events where we see cold air colliding with those precipitation bands. Again, it's not guaranteed. We could be on the milder side of the low pressure systems if this is shifted a few hundred miles further east and north. However, at this stage, it is a massive difference to what we're seeing on the GFS out to two to four hours. And the reason why I would more go inclined with this sliding low sort of pattern is because we'll have a look at the UK Met Office and the ECMWF, which are probably the two high, highest regarded models in terms of sort of day 7 to day 10 forecasting. So we do have a look at the UK Met Office run. You can see again, we have that low pressure move in, brief north to northeasterly wind. And as you can see, there is some colder air digging in with that. Could be seeing potential for some snow towards this weekend um, on Sunday. Beyond that, we see that low move through. Again, though, it dives to the south. You can see it's quite a big different sort of um, pattern to the GF GM in terms of where the jet stream is placed. But it's still a general idea of this low dropping to the south, high pressure to our north, pulling in easterly winds. And have a look at that um, boundary. Now, if we zoom into the UK, you can see centre of a low, a channel low with bitterly cold air just to the north and this would be a major snow event on the ECMWF. Now that is, well, bitterly cold there um, and we would be seeing the potential for snow with that. So yeah, we have to keep an eye really um, on what happens with this again. That's another marginal snow event potentially developing with that as that low dives to the south with the blocking to the north. Very interesting seeing that. Now, if we have a look at the UK Met Office run, see how that does compare. You can see again, 
Uh, westerly winds moving in briefly before we see that cold air coming from the east um, or north. Combining with that low, we could even be seeing a bit of snow with that. And if we zoom into the UK, look, you can see as that clears, cold air is dug in. And if we have a look at this new snow depth, um, of which have accumulated snow depth, uh, you can see a bit of snow does come mix in with that on me next Monday. A few centimetres, even towards London. So you can see subtle changes in the position below and how that cold air digs in can make massive changes in rain, sleet and snow. Now, if we zoom back out and go all the way to out to 168 hours, you can see again the general idea of high pressure to our north, low pressure to our south or over the top of the UK at this point. But you can see again the jet stream diving southwards. Now, we aren't going as far out to see that diving low exiting Greenland at this stage, but it is a similar sort of setup to the previous two models, the GM and the ECDF. So I do suspect it will go very similar to that and with the diving low as well, or with the diving jet stream, that's likely where the low pressure will go um, with the blocking to the north. Very similar pattern with potential, again, for marginal snow events. So very interesting in the long term, or the next at least week to 10 days, and we'll just have to keep an eye really on what happens with this. Now, if we have a look at the GFS Ensemble, you can see this easily well reflected. You can see quite cold at the moment, really quite cold air mass moving through. But it's only for a short period of time, 24 to 36 hours, before we rise back to around average or just a touch above average. For again, we drop below average as we another low pressure move through with cold air on its back edge. And that's where we could see potential for marginal snow vent. You can see a couple going down to minus 5. Um, and even minus 3, minus 4 is giving potential for snow if we get the dew points right and the exact um, wind direction as well. Beyond that, we do see a rise in temperatures. You can see the GFS operation run is very mild there, the mildest run, whereas majority stay around average, maybe a touch above, and a few even go below average. Before it does return to average again, um, or well, colder again, actually, as we start to pull in some colder air as the low clears. And you can see in the longer term, we have quite a few around minus five or just a touch above, but others going much milder. So there is a lot of uncertainty in play. However, the next seven to 10 days, it does look like there will be a few opportunities for seeing some more potentially marginal snow events. And if we do get that high pressure really going towards Scandinavia, we could go more sustained cold. Now, there isn't a massive cold pool towards Europe at this stage. It is reasonably cold. So it would be cold enough for snow if we did bring in a continental flow. It's not bitterly cold, so no beast from the east are on the card here. But if we did get that high pressure going, we could be staying with the air temperature around minus 5 and 50 HPA, like some of these op um, ensembles are going for. And that would um, keep us really quite cold for the first few weeks of December. Now, if we have a look at Glasgow, you can see... It is, again, really quite cold. You can see it's cold at the moment, then returns to around freezing. And then you can see the average line stays a good couple of degrees below average for the, most of the time. Some little mild sectors here or there. And staying around minus 5 at 50 HPA. So there could be a lot of snow across Scotland because that cold wet is just to our north and our east. Glasgow, of course, will be, um, in being in Scotland, will be the first to tap into it before we see it further southwards. Um, so you can see quite a few of the runs around minus 5 at 50 HP and stay like that for the foreseeable future. For example, if I look at no new snow depth spikes, you can see quite a few snow depth spikes are appearing from around 4th, 5th, all the way to 8th, 9th of December because of those colder air masses colliding the, those sliding lows. Again, where that snow line does um, sort of where that snow line is between the milder air and the colder air um, all depends exactly on the um, sort of minute details near the time that we can't really have a look at this stage when it's still seven to ten days away. If you have a look at London, you can see there are a few snow that spikes, but again, it's going to be very difficult for the ensembles to model any snow this far out um, when it's likely to be marginal like it is in London, where it's, however, further northwards, it's going to be a little bit uh, clearer cut. Another thing to have a look at is dew points. You can see again, even though we do have mild sectors pushing through, you can see the dew points from around the 4th of December all the way to around 10th, 11th are staying around or maybe just above freezing with quite a few blipping below freezing. So, yeah, we'll have to see what happens with that. And if you have it with Glasgow as well, you can see more around freezing as well, maybe dipping below freezing at times as well. And of course, dew point is one of those parameters that we do need um, to see wintriness fall out of the sky. Now, finally, we'll go through the UK Met Office run, having a go we're going to be seeing over the next um, sort of five days. You can see snow showers in the north at the moment, and then we see that little feature through early hours through Wales, 
producing a bit of winteriness, but you can see the UK Meadow has run really isn't anything too major. A few snow showers in the east, of course, um, before it starts to clear. And then we could see a bit of a front edge snow event, maybe for Thursday across Scotland and maybe in over some high ground in England. But it does look like the mild weather will undercut and the majority of the precipitation falling will be rain. A uh, bit of wintry just in the north as we see another sort of weather front move through, but generally most areas are milder before cold red does dig southwards once again for this weekend. And the UK Met Office run showing potentially a major snow event for early hours of Monday. Heavy snow across Scotland and even some heavier snow down the spine of England where that cold air does dig in. Now, very interestingly, if we have a look at the age 50 HP temperatures, um, you can see that pocket of colder or milder air mixing with the colder air. And all we've got to do is get that colder air to dig in behind. Um, if we also have a look at the dew point, which is one very important parameter, you can see a milder wedge of dew points around three, four, five degrees in the south. But you can see it stays around freezing just to the north of that. And that's where we could see some wintriness fall. Snow depths also right towards the end. You could be seeing five to ten centimetres maybe for a few areas and of course you can mess up his run does sort of underdo um, the precipitation uh, the sort of snow depth amounts um, so yeah very interesting seeing what could be happening over the next week or so if we also have a look at max temperatures you can see this afternoon it's actually quite chilly in the north only a few degrees uh, maybe even below out of freezing in the north of scotland it's going to fall very cold tonight quite widely where we have clear skies across the north minus two minus three is possible maybe even minus four minus five but widely around freezing to start tomorrow tomorrow's going to be a cold day two three maybe four degrees in a few spots but generally over high ground in the north we do have um uh, some elevation it's going to be cold Beyond that, through Thursday evening, potentially a frost on uh, in the east, but it does get shifted away through the early hours with precipitation falling with a warmer undercut, means most of the precipitation will be falling as rain. However, by Friday, temperatures start to drop once again with cold air sinking in from the north. By Sunday evening, bitterly cold air into the north, minus 13 degrees potentially overnight Sunday. And you can see as those weather fronts arrive through early hours of Monday, you can see only one, two degrees, but there's that pocket of much milder air. Um, and you can see very small differences between freezing or one degree and six or seven degrees and rain. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye really on what happens over the course of this weekend. As I said, there's the potential for seeing some real wintriness once again, even for the south. So yeah, make sure you stay tuned to my videos as we'll be covering a lot more over the next few days. And we'll have a we're having a look uh, and make sure you do have a look, sorry, at the UK Met Office weather warnings as they will be on top of this as well. They are probably already watching this weekend um, and any warnings they do put in force, I suspect given how marginal this looks at this stage um, will probably be Friday at the earliest. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.